Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler, and this time, we take a look at another foreign release. Again, this is a series based on the U.S. releases of the Star Wars films and other materials on home video physical media. And every once in a while, there is something that is a little bit instructive to us, that is illustrative when it comes to giving us context for the U.S. market that maybe is something released actually overseas. Oftentimes, what's different about U.S. and foreign markets can give us a sense of the context of what's actually going on in that U.S. market. So, for instance, recently, in a recently released episode, but way further down the playlist than this one, because I'm releasing this as a regular episode rather than supplemental, we looked at Revenge of the Sith on VHS, the one that Ricky from Scotland sent over, because this was illustrative to us because, hey, there wasn't a VHS release of Revenge of the Sith in the U.S. There was in other markets. This helps emphasize that and get us a little chance to talk about that issue. And that tends to be where I'll collect foreign releases, when it can illustrate something else to us. Uh, for instance, another foreign release we've covered is that Executor set, also known as the Definitive Collection VHS set from the UK. An awesome collection with a lot of great extras that really has no US counterpart. It's sort of a cross between the 1995 THX Remastered Edition widescreen set that we got here and the Definitive Collection Laserdisc set that we got over here a couple years before that. We also took a look way early on at this. This is the Star Wars Trilogy VCD set from 2000. You might say, well, what was the big deal with this? Well, this was a Malaysian release, but because VCD really isn't big in the United States, it never really has been, and there weren't any Star Wars home video releases of the original trilogy in any kind of digital media until 2004. You could only get it on VHS. In fact, there was a VHS release in the U.S. accompanying this in 2000. There were a lot of people who heavily imported this into the U.S. to be able to play it on DVD players and computers and so forth rather than on VHS. That's kind of the situation we're dealing with in this episode. It's interesting in that all the prequel trilogy films could sort of be seen as turning points in Star Wars home media within the United States. Revenge of the Sith, 2005. No VHS release. VHS is essentially dead in the U.S., but you see it in other markets. It is released initially on DVD for the U.S. home market. Okay, take a step back. Attack of the Clones. When Attack of the Clones came out on VHS, there's no widescreen equivalent to it. Again, VHS is dying in 2002. Also illustrative, of course, because it was the first time we had DVD releases and full screen and widescreen released side by side for a film, and the first time a Star Wars film got a home video release the same year that it was in theaters. Again, illustrative of the change that's happening. Now, take a step back. The Phantom Menace is another major one. The Phantom Menace is primarily remembered for the fact, at least in terms of Star Wars home video progression, as the first Star Wars film to hit DVD. When it did, remember, that was in... 2001, two years after it had been in theaters, with a widescreen-only release. Every saga has a beginning, doesn't say widescreen up here. There was no conception that this was going to be one of two different versions, widescreen and full screen. It didn't get a full screen release until the following year in 2002 when they released full screen and widescreen of Attack of the Clones side by side. So here we had sort of a mismatched set. It is sort of a set, but one says full screen, the other one doesn't say widescreen like all the other Star Wars films will say. Instead, it simply says, every saga has a beginning. These, of course, are the same ones that you could get in the saga pack, right? The full screen saga pack in the U.S. And in 2008, in that trilogy set with the slim cases, but the same content. And don't get me wrong, DVD is a big big deal in terms of Star Wars because it took so long for the other Star Wars films, the original trilogy, to actually hit DVD. DVD is a big turning point for Star Wars and gives a chance for more extras, and it's yet another chance for George Lucas to tinker with the films. But we can't forget that there was more to The Phantom Menace and the context around it in terms of home video media than just the DVDs. The Phantom Menace began life on home video on VHS in 2000, a year after being in theaters. They did up a special widescreen set. This was an era in which if you were going to have a widescreen VHS release, it was usually something special. Special packaging, 
uh, special extra features with it, physical goodies like in this case. It was kind of a thing. And as we've already looked at, there was the full screen version, there was the uh, Toys R Us clamshell gold version. VHS is kind of how we remember the Phantom Menace initially hitting home video, and then DVD is where it really kind of broke through for Star Wars, and finally we had Star Wars reaching a new type of home media. We often forget, though, that this was the era, as with those VCDs, where certain media either didn't exist in the U.S. or didn't for the Phantom Menace. We had those VCDs that I've pointed out before, and in some markets there was a a box that these are both in, like a slipcase these are both in, but we had the Phantom Menace on two VCDs that came out that was moderately imported into the United States, not as much as that 2000 original trilogy set, but these were being imported before the DVD came out. But that wasn't the ideal, that wasn't really the highest visual standard prior to DVD. Turns out, though that Phantom Menace didn't get a U.S. release on that definitive home media. Speaking, of course, about Laserdisc. The last U.S. Laserdisc release for Star Wars was this one, the Star Wars Trilogy Special Edition widescreen set that came out in 1997. So three years prior to the Phantom Menace hitting home video in any format, Laserdisc effectively died for Star Wars in the U.S. market. The Phantom Menace thus became the first Star Wars film in the U.S. market to not get a release on Laserdisc, CED, or Betamax, only on VHS and DVD, then later on Blu-ray. Many video files and audio files, though, that is P-H-I-L-E-S, were not content with VHS, though, for The Phantom Menace when it came out. They were used to that better visual and picture quality that you could get, though still not quite up to where uh, DVD would be most of the time, uh, that you could get out of Laserdisc. Well, sure enough, there was a Phantom Menace Laserdisc produced, and it was heavily, heavily imported into the United States. But as I said, imported. It was not a U.S. release. If you were watching The Phantom Menace on Laserdisc in the United States back in 2000, you would have been watching, more than likely, this. This is Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, on Laserdisc from Japan. All right, now this is inside one of those little plastic cases. You'll see why here in just a second. Give you a quick look here. Probably the most distinctive thing, unusual here, is this little strip. Now, what is that thing? What is the deal? Well, it's... Just on there, sitting there, it's not attached. If I take this out, and yes, this is like a comic book cover for a laser disc, okay, that just slips right off of there. Let's look at that first because that's a distinctive thing you'll see with most of these Japanese laser disc releases. This is, and please forgive the fact that I speak English, I'm an American. I've lived in the Midwest, and I've lived in the South, so I will probably butcher the O sound you're supposed to make for this. This is an Obi. Not an Obi, not an Abi, and not supposed to be like Obi-Wan, unless maybe it's like Obi-1, when people thought that Obi-1 was two letters and a number, because he was like a clone or something. This is an Obi, more like, uh, I'm told, OBGYN. So when you see one of these, think gynecologist, and then wonder what's wrong with yourself. Um, this is basically, it's the same word in Japanese that means sash. It's a little side piece that gives more information about the product itself. Though granted, it's giving it predominantly in Japanese here, of course. You see it says 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment up at the top. You have the widescreen notice there. THX notice there. Dolby Digital Sound notice there. Uh, other notices that I, you know, can't read. And then a little bit further down, it says Lucasfilm. I like the fact that it's got the little piece of the Star Wars logo in the title, so when you slide it on, it lines up exactly with the text that's on the cover. Then on the back, there's even more information relating to the product. Again, all Japanese, though, obviously. From the side, as far as the spine goes, just a little bit of text. Not really much there. No Star Wars logo. On the side. And then here's your regular packaging. Looks very much like that US packaging. 
Every saga has a beginning. In fact, you would be forgiven to think that this is a U.S. release because there is nothing on this cover that's in Japanese. Every bit of it is in English. Say you didn't hear me say American. Duh. It's English, not American. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Every saga has a beginning. Digitally mastered THX for superior sound and picture quality. And the little Laserdisc logo down there on the corner. Where it starts to become obvious that this is not a U.S. release is not when you flip it on the side, Star Wars The Phantom Menace, the number, but when you flip it to the back. Get a similar back to what we saw with the other home video releases in the U.S. for this, but all, well, almost all Japanese up here. Then you've got your uh, cast information and whatnot here in English. Then a mixture of English and Japanese running down there at the bottom. Uh, these are CLV discs, of course, so they're the extended play discs. No time compression, it's two discs. The movie is across three different sides, so there is one unused side. Unfortunately, no bonus features whatsoever. Not even a trailer or anything like that. It is here NTSC. I don't know if you'll be able to see that if I put this up in front of you or not. But it's NTSC. Again, that's a big deal. When you're dealing with foreign releases, in order for it to play in a U.S.-based player, in something from this market, it needs to be NTSC, not PAL. So if you're looking at somewhere like, you know, the U.K., somewhere else in Europe, Australia and such, uh, tend to be PAL releases, and they kind of share that market to some extent. Whereas over here, you look at Canada, you look at the United States, and you look at Japan of all places, you're also getting NTSC. Uh, that's something that has its roots way back into the cultural and business ties between us and Japan that were forged really in the wake of World War II when we decided that since the tendency was that the enemies would become enemies again, like with Germany, World War I to World War II, that the way that you prevented further warfare, see, the history teacher's coming out, is that you essentially democratize, demilitarize, and essentially transform Japan by bringing heavy American influences into rebuilding helping them build back up, helping them restructure their society with the end of the emperors and such, and wind up basically with what amounts to an American-style democracy tailored for Japan. And that gave us very close ties to them, and our markets have been tied together very closely ever since. So we have this NTSC encoding that winds up on both sides of it, uh, and has continued to this day despite other markets uh, perhaps being a little bit more available to Japanese products at different times throughout our histories, our shared history here. All right, so you open it up, and actually this is kind of cool in that it's like some of the other ones we've seen, though not all of them. And you've got a nice little open area here. You've got Naboo. You've got your track listings over here to the side. Although aside from it saying, you know, side one, side two, whatever, in this case, it's all in Japanese, again, because it's a Japanese product, but it's one of the many Japanese products that tend to have a lot of English alongside the Japanese lettering. That thing you saw coming out from inside is this, is basically, from what I can tell, it's like a guide to setting up your speakers and whatnot to get the most out of the laser disc. Uh, nothing on the back, just the original insert here on the front. As for the discs, then they come out of the side flaps. Again, lots of, lots of reflection. You can see that blue snowball mic that I use. You can see a hint of items to be covered in future episodes of different shows here and so forth. Uh, but there's your Laserdisc label. Side one. Side two. Yes, that is all the different Optimus Primes back there in the background on that poster. And then the other disc, which if I angle it just right, can show you that the Optimus Prime poster is coupled with all the different versions of Megatron over there as of the time it was being made. Has your side three label. And of course, there's no content on the other side of this. It's just a three side film. So you just got kind of a blank laser disc label there on the other side. So again, it's an interesting release overall. I mean, it's basically just the film. It is widescreen, and it was the way that the higher-end audience, when it comes to video and sound quality, could see The Phantom Menace 
on something a little bit better than VHS prior to the DVD being released, but it was something that really was only needed for a year because DVD came out the next year. Although I'm told by those who are very well into this sort of thing that the audio on this is actually a little bit better than what's on the DVD, but I, mm -mm, I wouldn't be able to tell you much of a difference. From the standpoint of where this fits in historically in the context it can give us, it tells us, among other things, that Star Wars still had a market on Laserdisc outside the United States, even after it sort of died in the United States. And as you may recall, Star Wars found its way into widescreen format in Japan on Laserdisc before it ever did in the United States. In fact, I believe it was three years prior to. So if you really want to get down to it, Japan's Laserdisc market has been more robust straight through when it comes to Star Wars and has a couple of times where it's really sort of made a dent in the context of what we think of as Star Wars home video media. With that, we'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the home video viewers. I can find the fucking opening. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs>